Thank you, Mr. President. My delegation is obliged to exercise its right of reply in response to the statement just made by India. What we have heard from India is pure political fiction. Let me list the lies. First, Jammu and Kashmir is not part of India. It never was and never will be. Just ask the people of Jammu and Kashmir. The Security Council done just that. It has decided that the final disposition of Jammu and Kashmir will be decided by its people through a UN-sponsored plebiscite. India accepted the Security Council resolutions. It is obligated to implement them under Article 25 of the UN Charter. It has failed to do so through fraud and force. Instead, India has sought to suppress Kashmiris' demand for their right to self-determination and freedom by imposing a cruel occupation. Since 1989, over 100,000 Kashmiris have been martyred. On 5 August 2019, India gave up all pretense and announced annexation of Jammu and Kashmir. It enlarged its occupation army to 9 lakh, imposed a complete lockdown, turning the beautiful valley of Kashmir into the largest open-air prison in the world. The entire Kashmiri population is the victim of India's brutal tactics. Innocent Kashmiris are killed routinely in fake encounters and cordon and search operation. Collective punishments are imposed with the destruction of entire villages and neighborhoods. The entire Kashmiri political leadership remains incarcerated. 15,000 Kashmiri boys have been abducted. Many disappeared and tortured. An information blackout has been imposed by closing media houses and charging independent journalists with terrorism. Indeed, a classic colonial settler project is underway. And yet, the oppressed Kashmiris have not capitulated. They have not given up their demand for freedom from Indian occupation. At all political celebrations, they fly flag of Pakistan, not India. They cheer the Pakistani cricket team and they shout Pakistan Zindabad, long live Pakistan. India may forcibly occupy the land of Kashmir, but it has lost its people forever. The second lie is to describe the Kashmiri freedom struggle as terrorism. This is a familiar colonial ploy. Under international law, Kashmiri's resistance to foreign occupation is just and legal. It is India's occupation that is illegal. It is India which must be held accountable for its war crimes and human rights violation in the occupied territory. The two reports of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights documented these crimes and violations. Over a dozen special rapporteurs of the Human Rights Council have called for the investigation of human rights violation in Jammu and Kashmir. India has consistently denied them access to the occupied territory. The third Indian lie is to portray itself as a victim of terrorism. On the contrary, India is a serial sponsor of terrorism. It has perpetrated terrorism against each one of its immediate neighbors. Now, India's terrorist franchise has gone global. Pakistan has solid evidence of Indian sponsorship of Tehreeke Taliban Pakistan, which has carried out repeated terrorist attacks against Pakistani civilian and military targets. The BLA, Baloch Insurgent, is also financed and operated by India. The captured Indian spy and naval commander Kulbushan Jadav has fully enumerated India's terrorist activities in his confession. India must be held accountable for its terrorist activities. Mr. President, if a government is capable of brutally persecuting its own people, one can imagine what it is capable of doing to the people of other nations. The BJP RSS government, which has ruled India since 2014, is guilty of imposing a reign of terror not only against the people of Jammu and Kashmir, but also against its own 200 million Muslims, 2 million Christians, and millions of Dalits and other low-caste Hindus. India's crimes are well documented. These include pogroms in Gujarat, Mumbai, and Delhi. 
the frequent lynching of Muslims by cow vigilantes, the bulldozing of Muslim houses and shops, hate speech including calls by political leaders and Hindutva priests for genocide against Muslims. In orgy of Islamophobia, Muslims are forcibly converted or disenfranchised. Bans imposed on the hijab, love jihad laws adopted, and hundreds of mosques, including the Babri Mosque, have been destroyed in the campaign to obliterate Muslim and their cultural heritage, the very legacy of India. In the first eight months of 2023, 525 attacks alone took place against Christians, including the recent inhuman massacre of Christians by Hindu tribes in Northeast India. Since 2018, one lakh cases of crimes were registered against Dalits. Thousands of Sikhs were killed at the Golden Temple in organized rites in 1984 and thereafter. Mr. President, India will not halt these human rights violations and, uh, and of human rights and international law until sense of impunity is removed. The world must stop giving India free pass for strategic reasons. I thank you.